Now at six, a Burke bombshell. An historic day in the city of Chicago. Ed Burke, the longest serving alderman in the city, found guilty in his federal corruption case. The public voted Mr. Burke into office and they trusted that he would be guided and motivated by pursuing the common good. He betrayed that trust. What happens next for the now disgraced former alderman? The jury handing down 13 out of 14 guilty verdicts for Ed Burke today. Chicago's political machine serving the city's southwest side for more than 50 years. His legacy tarnished now for using his political clout to pressure people to hire his law firm. We have live team coverage from what's happening at his house to a breakdown of what the guilty counts mean. We begin with CBS News political reporter Chris Ty, who's been following this case since day one. Chris. Joe and Erica, at the end of the day, this case against Ed Burke came down to a very fundamental question. Did he strong arm individuals and organizations trading his political muscle to line his own pockets, getting people to hire his private tax firm? In the end, a jury of nine women and three men said definitively, yes, he did. Let's look at some video of Ed Burke leaving the Dirksen Federal Building earlier this afternoon. He did not speak to the media. We should point out this was not a clean sweep. While Burke was convicted, on 13 of 14 counts. His former assistant, Pete Andrews, was found not guilty on his five counts. So the U.S. attorney spoke this afternoon talking about all the cases here, but namely saying and underlining the point that Ed Burke now joins a list of very dubious and distinctive Chicago politicians. This case was about bribery and extortion occurring at the highest levels of Chicago city government. Our office represents the people of the United States. The people have a right to honest and open government where decisions about official actions that public officials take or do not take are based not on their own private financial interest, but on the public interest. This really was a historic case in the city of Chicago, the longest serving alderman of all time. A former alderman, a former colleague of Ed Burke's, flipped on him, becoming an FBI mole, recording him with those iconic lines that we've heard time and again. Have we landed the tuna? Has the cash register rung yet? At the end of the day, the numbers of this trial look like this. The case began five years ago. The trial began just over six weeks ago. There were 36 witnesses, dozens of examples of undercover recordings, both audio and video. And in the end, Ed Burke will learn how many years he's put behind bars at his sentencing in June. Joe and Erica, the longest serving alderman in Chicago history, turns 80 next week. Live at the Dirksen Federal Building, Chris Ty, CBS 2 News. Chris, thanks. Let's go to CBS 2 investigator Megan Hickey. She is also live at the Dirksen Federal Building with what happens now after this guilty verdict. Medic. Right, Joe and Erica, that jury deliberated for more than 23 hours. We now know the verdict, but I want to bring in CBS2 legal analyst Irv Miller to talk a little bit about what happens next, what happens between now and that sentencing, which we believe is mid-June. Well, they're uh, going to get a report from the probation department saying good things about the alderman, bad things about the alderman, and the judge is going to look at the report and decide what number to impose as the number of years in the federal penitentiary based on that report that uh, will be coming forward in the next couple months. And all of that work could take six or seven months? It could because things don't move very quickly here in federal court these days. Talk a little bit about the appeals process. That, of course, is still a possibility, right? There's no question that if he's sentenced to a federal penitentiary, he will appeal it to the Seventh Circuit here in this building. And typically, uh, defendants don't win in the Seventh Circuit. Uh, his best argument that he has is what uh, people always ask me, why did they call Solis as to the stand? Well, they call him because they want to use that as a grounds for appeal, saying the judge limited their examination of Solis, and therefore he didn't get a fair trial. So therefore, the, the case should be reversed and be retried. So really, it, it, the only way to get a successful appeal like that is, is sort of a technicality like that. And usually the technicality is that his, their lawyers were ineffective. They weren't good lawyers. They left things out. Well, let me tell you, uh, Alderman Burke had the best lawyers in town. It's not going to get reversed on that ground. The U.S. attorneys were great. They're seasoned veterans. They know how to protect the defendant's rights, and that's what happened in this case. So that's going to certainly be an uphill battle for that one. Yeah, absolutely. What about the sentencing? I know we it's very much up, up in the air right now, but what could he be looking at? 
You know, you get anything up to 20. He got convicted of three counts that all carry a maximum 20-year sentence. He's not going to get 20 years. It's up to the judge's discretion how many years to give him between 1 and 20. Uh, uh, he would do 85 percent, whatever number the judge says, in a federal penitentiary. But also the federal penitentiary, besides having actual prisons, they have medical facilities too, considering his age. So they can't say, hey, listen, he's 80 years old and he's not in good health. That doesn't make any difference in the federal system. What about the possibility of probation? It will not happen. It's a definite no. All right. On that note, thank you so much, Irv. We are live at Dirksen. Sending it back to you guys, Joe and Erica. All right. Megan, thank you. CBS 2's Charlie Demar live outside Ed Burke's southwest side home. And Charlie, you just heard Irv mention it. It will be some time before Ed Burke is actually sentenced. And Joe and Erica, after Ed Burke left the Dirksen Federal Building, he came here to his southwest side home. His heavily gated southwest side home and when he is finally sentenced in June, he'll be protected by a much different set of metal bars. We did catch Burke as he got out of his car and went into his home. He left the Dirksen Federal Court building with his wife Ann and a member of his legal team. They arrived to the home with Burke sitting in the front seat. Burke continued to keep his silence as he has throughout the entire trial. We of course tried getting him to talk and give a reaction once he left the courthouse and again at his house. But again, he did not have much to stay, say. He declined to say anything at all as he solemnly walked through his front door wearing his signature trench coat, hat, and holding a briefcase. Again, Ed Burke will not be behind those bars, uh, presumably until the earliest, which would be June when his sentence, when his sentencing hearing is set. So he'll be uh, able to just go about his day until June. We are live from the Southwest side. I'm Charlie Damar, CBS 2 News. Thank you, Charlie. Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson released this statement about 30 minutes ago. He says, quote, elected officials are responsible for serving with honesty and integrity with a moral responsibility to their constituents to uphold and abide by the law. In the case that they fail to do so, it is imperative that they are held accountable. That is what the jury decided today. Ed Burke joins a long list of former city council members who have been convicted. Here are just some of those. Former Alderman Willie Cochran was convicted for pocketing money for a charitable fund intended to help families and children in his Southside ward. It didn't actually go to that. Sandy Jackson pleaded guilty in 2013 to filing false income tax returns. Prosecutors claim she hid about $600,000 in taxable income. A federal jury found William Beavers guilty of tax evasion and former Alderman Ed Verdoliak was convicted for his role in a crooked real estate scheme in 2000. Stay with CBS 2 News for more analysis and continuing coverage on the conviction of Ed Burke on our news tonight at 10. You can also see updated information on our streaming service, CBS News Chicago. You'll find us on the news and opinion page on Pluto TV and through the CBS News app on Fire TV and Roku.